Uh, whenever you all are ready, could you explain what you put together? Okay, um, yeah, we wanted to make a handwritten recognition uh, program. Um, the entire project would have been using a camera to detect a uh, character on paper and uh, putting that through our digit uh, or our character recognition um, algorithm. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get the camera working together, but we did do that in isolation and we thought it was uh, pretty cool to get everything working on CMake, which was like a bulk of our <laughs> issues sure. um, and all the libraries working and things like that with the program so we did get the camera working in isolation and it's um you can see so your hands in front, of, hands it in front of it and in theory would have we would have used a button Maybe. to take a picture, a picture um so that would uh, keep it still we would save the image um and then once we let go of the button then it would resume normal program okay and it would have saved the image and we would use, use that image instead of uh what we're using now which is paint so just to make sure I understand what you're currently doing. So the camera here is mm -hmm, communicating yes. to the RP2040. Yeah. Is that through like an SPI channel? It's through I2C. It's through I2C. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. then are, is the RP2040 then communicating the camera data back to the um, laptop? Through UART to uh, this, this processor. Um, there's a script to process uh, the data that's being sent through UART to display it here. Cool. Okay, so yeah. this is this is proving that the RP2040 is accurately sampling the camera and it's streaming mm -hmm. yeah. the, all the cameras. So in principle, that data could land on the RP2040 right. for some processing. But Yeah. Unfortunately, okay. we didn't get it working because we hit a bottleneck when we tried to put it together with the VGA because there wasn't enough RAM to support both the frame buffer for the VGA and the camera. Okay. So okay. Um, Bruce did help us a little bit with that, but we didn't have like the time to sure. uh, put all that together. But in theory, that would be our like next steps. Very cool. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so if we want to go on to the algorithm, uh, kind of step by step, we would uh, first of all use paint to make the character to put through the algorithm and we do that uh, using an application and we draw that out and we save it as a BMP or a bitmap um, uh -huh. file and then we have two sides to it uh, kind of the Python side and then uh, serially sending the image to the Pico so on the Python side we take the image we use a pillow library um, on Python to uh, to get the image format that we want, we get an RGB values, and then we send that serially over to the Pico. Okay. Uh, one issue that we uh, found out was that since we only can send one character at a time through um, UART, uh, if the number was bigger than nine or 99, then it would be sent as three or two or three characters. So we had to take that into account because we wanted like a whole integer. Um, but we're sending that as characters instead. So instead, we sent like two sets of data with the count of each character, and then um, the Pico would take into account. Okay, I need to wait for two characters if ninety nine is coming in, or three characters if like two hundred is coming in. Okay. Um. So that's something we needed to take into account. Um. And then once that uh, image was fully onto the Pico, we would use the Canon algorithm, which Ashley was going to talk about. Okay. Yeah, so we use the. Um, so after the image is received, it's it's. it's the Python service was also for formatting it into a 28 by 28 array because also 28 by 28 array which then we run through our KNN algorithm which is responsible for actually figuring out what image it is. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. So the way that we did that, first of all we chose to use KNN because we wanted to also take into account like different handwritings. So if someone writes like, if there's different ways to write an R or B for example, we want to figure out like the most similar ones and be able to kind of like identify it to like the, like, the most like classified nearest neighbors. So we chose, that's one reason why we chose KNN. So kind of like at like a higher level, it's able to find, it's able to, our algorithm is able to find the distance between the test point and then um, the training data set and figure, uh, find the distance of how close it is using the Euclidean distance, which is just like kind of like a one-to-one -one mapping um, between like the two points of the, um, of like the two, to the comparing the twenty by 20, the two twenty eight by twenty eight um, bit arrays, and then after it figures out what, it, after it classifies which one it thinks is most likely, it'll then take that and then be like display it onto the VGA. Okay. And then we chose to use like kind of like five nearest neighbors, like compared to like the five most likely ones, just like to um, make it as accurate as possible. Yeah, and then I guess like in terms of like the train and. One more thing in terms of like the training data set that we use, we use the eMNIST extended MNIST library, which is available online, and they had they had the all the different letters categorized into like the 
like kind of like a big file and then we like parsed through the whole um the format that it was in and kind of convert it into how we wanted to do it and also had to convert the into the rgb values like the zero to 255. okay so am i correct that you trained the model offline like on your own no we are this is all done on our on the peak i see yeah. okay 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 very cool yeah. so uh, the next part is all the way over here sure which is our decoder um the values coming in from the print is a little bigger than the array that we're being used so we have to make a compression between a bigger size to a smaller one and then that is being used to show between um, an rgb value to a grayscale and there are three values 330 660 and 1320 which is corresponding to blue green and red and those all are connected in series to then send in a voltage um, the same voltage to all the green red and blue pins on the vga and then we can show our demo so you've you've the original vga driver had a red green and blue yes. input and you've rewired it such that you're sending the same voltage into all Correct. three so that you're getting a grayscale gradient yes. instead of mm -hmm. different colors yeah. okay and on the vga it will display the compressed um, picture as well as what the algorithm decides what. very cool okay okay right, now we can show it working we do have a few limitations though that yeah, so a couple of limitations that we have is in terms of the memory. I know Anya mentioned a little bit earlier the RAM issues that we had because of the integrating in the camera with the DJ. Another thing that we had is we also did end up running out of, did run out of flash memory, but like if we wanted to make our train set data, train data set bigger and kind of like make it more and more accurate, yeah. um, we didn't have enough flash memory for that. So our first alternative was like we were going to use external memory for that, but then the issue with that was that each external memory only has one megabyte of it. And, and we already had the flash memory of two MB, so we were like, if we, if we're gonna run out of flash memory with only, so what we said was like having like a hundred arrays for each character. So if we wanted to have more external memory, we would need like five or six to actually be able to kind of like support the full training data set that would okay. be available. So we were like, okay, maybe we'd focus more on like training on like smaller tra training data set, and then hopefully kind of working. To, that would be like our next step if we had. Yeah. Gotcha. So that was like kind of like our bottom line for the training. Okay. Data set. And because of that, uh, the accuracy definitely drops with the yeah. number of training uh, data sets we have. Sure, okay. So we do have a few of uh, pre-written um, ones that definitely work. So this, uh, we can check an O, which was written previously. Um, so the way it works, we would run the Python script, uh, specify the BMP file we want to send in, and this would send everything serially, um, and then uh, display it on the VGA screen and the, with the predicted character. Um, cool. And a few other examples would be this I. Um, where so we are these characters this. that you had you previously drew in paint? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And just um, send this BMP file. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And we, so that's an and that. So these are the ones that are proven to be correct. We can also, um, if you want to try writing an R. Okay. Um, a nice R. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be as nice as I can. And we'll see how... Um, and if we save this, we can run it. I think it's called test.bmp. And you can see that it'll show up and we'll see if it's predicted. Hey, it's awesome. Hard. So it seems that your handwriting is really nice. <laughs> um, and that's basically our project. Very yeah. cool. I want to get a close up of the grayscale because that looks really nice. So that's, that's how many, how big is the gradient? Is it? Um, it's eight. Um, eight gray values but i think there were there weren't enough uh, distinct we couldn't distinguish between two of them okay so it became like six gotcha so we would um separate because the values are zero to 255 we would put like six if statements to determine which um bit value or uh, which value for the grayscale that it would get awesome yeah very nice thank you